Hello, everybody. My name is Ellis Johnson, and I am a doctoral student at the University of Kaiserslautern, in Germany. Today, I'm going to be talking about morphological simplification in a nuctitude child directed speech. All children learn to speak and understand language at approximately the same age, following approximately the same course of linguistic development, despite the fact that they grow up in different environment. In order for them to acquire language, children need to be exposed to linguistic input. One of the central questions in language development is what kind of linguistic experience and how much input are needed to support first language acquisition. In the past 60 years, multiple studies demonstrated that speech directed toward the child recipient is distinct from adult directed speech. Adults adapt their speech address to children in numerous ways. Child-directed speech tends to be highly interactional, hyper-articulated, syntactically and lexically adapted for young listeners and preferred by them. Many researchers propose that child-directed speech exists universally across all cultures. Among the recent works is the study from Princeton University by Piazza and colleagues, uh, which examined child caregiver pairs that spoke 10 different languages and found that in all the languages, mothers consistently shifted their timbre between adult and child directed speech, and that the shift was similar across languages, which suggests that such alterations may be universal. Other researchers argue that in some societies, adults do not speak to children at all until a certain age. For example, Shifflin and Ox demonstrated that despite the fact that the Kaluli tribe of Papua New Guinea does not typically use child-directed speech, Kaluli children language acquisition is not impaired. To this day, the most studied domains of child-directed speech have been lexicon, phonetics and phonology, and syntax. The areas in which the differences between child and adult-directed speech are most obvious. When it comes to lexicon, child-directed speech is characterized by um, the restricted range of vocabulary and preference for concrete words. With regard to phonetics and phonology, child-directed speech is usually described as having higher pitch overall and a greater pitch range, slower speech uh, with syllable lengthening, longer pauses, and fewer disfluences, and also exaggerated intonation and stress. And as to syntax, when compared to adult-directed speech, it tends to have shorter, simpler utterances. When it comes to morphology, however, there's still a distinct shortage of literature. And in this regard, polysynthetic languages constitute a great source for investigation. While identifying words and morphemes in the stream of speech is a challenging task for young children in any language, the difficulty reaches a whole new level in the morphologically rich languages, like in Uctitude. Inuktitut belongs to Eskimo Elliot language family and is spoken by 34,000 speakers in northeast of Canada. It allows more than 10 morphemes per word and syntax within a word. There are three word classes, more than a thousand nominal and verbal inflection that are obligatory, and more than 400 optional word internal morphemes. This slide offers a glimpse into the morphological complexity of an octitude by demonstrating how its polysynthetic agglutinative structure allows expressing the meaning of an entire sentence in one word that reads Ilutualu Murang Simangi Ngamalitao, which means, but also because I never went to the really big house. 
The current study examines whether and how mothers simplify the complex morphology in an institute to make it more accessible to children and whether such simplification is fine-tuned, that is, whether child-directed speech is adjusted in accordance with the children's stage of linguistic development. We hypothesize that the morphological complexity and lexical diversity of child-directed speech increases as the children advance through the stages of linguistic development. In all our recordings, we could observe interaction between the target children and their family members, meaning that there were plenty of people besides mothers who can be considered their caregivers, including their much older siblings and grandparents who often live in the same household. Why didn't we consider their speech directed to the children? There have been debates on child-directed speech, uh, whether it differs depending on the gender and age of the speaker, their relationship to the child and their role uh, in the child's life. Uh, if we take mother's and father's child-directed speech as an example, we'll see that earlier studies seem to lean toward the theory that their child-directed speech has similar characteristics. However, starting from the 80s, there have been multiple studies that point out differences between mother's and father's child-directed speech. A study conducted by a research group at Washington State University shows that Mothers use higher pitch and vary their pitch more when interacting with their child than with adults, while their fathers talk to their children using intonation patterns more like when they talk to other adults. The researchers do not see this difference as evidence that fathers fail to engage the children, but rather as them providing a bridge between the baby talk and the speech they hear in the outside world. So fathers and mothers types of child-directed speech are complementary to their children's language learning, but there is evidence that they are different. And we decided that analyzing them together could potentially blur the results. Why didn't we look at them separately then? Unfortunately, there was not enough data for it. The fathers address their children too infrequently to investigate their speech separately. So we analyzed the speech of the mothers addressing eight monolingual, typically developing inuktitut speaking children, aged 11 to 32 months at onset. Uh, the uh, data were collected every one to four months across a one year period. It was videotaped during daily home activities and comprised spontaneous naturalistic interactions between the children and their family members and friends. It was then transcribed and translated by native speakers. All morphemes were identified and glossed, and the data were divided into six groups representing the stages of the children's linguistic development according to their mean length of utterance in morphemes. After that, only the speech of the mothers addressing the children was analyzed. On this slide, we can see children's mean length of utterance in morphemes by stage, starting from one morpheme per utterance in stage one and increasing to more than 3.5 morphemes in stage six. Children's mean age increases from 19.8 to 32.7 months, the children's age range varies from 11 to 37 months. There were two to four child mother pairs in each stage. And finally, you can see the number of child directed utterances produced by the mothers by stage. The data for the following points of interest were extracted and calculated using CLAN. The number of verb root types and noun root types the use of polysynthetic structures where the word class changes within a word, including the cases of when such change is combined with passive, and lexical diversity in morphemes. 
First, the means for each point of the data collection were calculated, followed by the stage means, and then the trends were tested using Pearson correlation calculated in R. In the first study, we investigated the use of different verb roots in the speech of the mothers and figures one and two demonstrate how the number of verb root types in child-directed speech increases with the stage of the children's linguistic development. A similar trend was observed in the second study where the number of noun root types in the speech of the mothers positively correlated with the stage. In studies three and four, we looked at polysynthetic structures where the word class changes within a single word. And the first example demonstrates how a verb changes into a noun with the help of a nominalizer that which while the second example shows us how a noun can change into a verb with a verbalizer acquire. Figures five and six show that the use of structures where a verb changes into a noun within a single word is positively correlated with the stages of linguistic development. Figures seven and eight show the similar trend for the structures where a noun changes into a verb within a single word. In studies five and six, we examined the more complex polysynthetic structures, those where the word class changes more than once within a single word. Example three shows how a verb can change to a noun with the help of a nominalizer one which and then back to a verb with the verbalizer be. Example four demonstrates how a noun changes into a verb and back to noun using a verbalizer cover with and a nominalizer one which. Figures nine and 10 show a positive correlation between the use of the verb to noun to verb structures and the stages of linguistic development. While figures 11 and 12 demonstrate a positive correlation between the stages and the noun to verb to noun structures. In study seven, we looked at the structures where a noun into a verb change is combined with the use of passive. Both examples five and six show how such complex polysynthetic structures are constructed in a nuctitude. We found a positive correlation between the use of the noun into verb plus passive structures by mothers and the stages of the children's linguistic development. Finally, we investigated lexical diversity in morphemes, a measurement of how many different morphemes there are in a text. We used the method that calculates the moving average type to token ratio for morphemes because this method is the least dependent on the sample size. Figures 15 and 16 show how lexical diversity of the child-directed speech increases from stage one to stage six. The Pearson stats show that the lexical diversity of the, mother, uh, of the mother's speech and the stages of the children's linguistic development are strongly positively correlated. The results we obtained show that morphological complexity and lexical diversity of the child-directed speech in an octitude increase from stage one to stage six, which suggests that mothers simplify the morphology, presumably to facilitate their children's acquisition. The simplification appeared to be at least partially adjusted in accordance with the children's stage of linguistic development. In our future studies, we plan to concentrate on investigating the patterns of the increase in complexity and on comparing the data to a sample of adult direct speech in an which would provide an important insight 
to the nature of the morphological aspect of child-directed speech. Thank you for your attention.